Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using absolute and relative references in Microsoft Excel. As always, if you find this video to be useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this worksheet fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. I have this pretest variable and this post-test variable, so column B and column C. And we're going to be looking at the differences here between absolute and relative references. So we use a reference when we're building formulas in Excel to refer back to a value in another cell. For example, if I want to calculate the difference here between the pretest and post-test scores, this formula would be fairly straightforward. It would be equal sign, and then I would refer to B2. That's the first value in this pretest variable. Then minus, and then I refer to C2, the first value in the post-test variable. And I hit enter, and I get the difference, negative 2. So I'm referring to the value here in pretest, referring to the value here, and that allows me to build this formula. Now for this particular example, when I want to calculate the difference, it makes sense to use these type of references, and these are relative references. So you have just the letter B and the number 2 minus the letter C and the number 2. By default, any reference you populate into an, a cell is going to be a relative reference. So if I autofill this down, so I go to the bottom right corner of this cell, and I pull that down to the bottom, all 17 records, you can see it autofills this formula down for these other pairs of pretest and post-test values. And because the initial reference I used was relative, it advances the references for the other formulas. So the formula here for difference in row 3 is now 36 minus 35. It's pretest minus post-test for the next record. So it's going to move one record for each cell that I move down. Now we don't always want to use relative references because sometimes one or more of the references we make in a particular formula need to stay static. So I'm going to give you an example of that here in column A. Over here to the right, I've calculated the mean of the pretest variable. So that's the average of all these scores here. And the mean of the post-test variable, the average of all these scores. And in statistics, it's not unusual to calculate what's called the residual. So we have a variable like this, like pretest. The residual is the absolute value of the score minus the mean. And we want to calculate that residual for every score we have in this pretest variable. So if I only use relative references, we can see this won't work. Let's say I have this value 40, so it's be equal sign. I'll go to this value 40, cell B2, and I'll subtract the mean, that's cell I3. I'll put these in parentheses, and here of course I want the absolute value, so it'd be ABS. I hit enter, and it gives me the value 3. Now that's correct. The absolute value of the difference of 40 and 43 is 3. But when I autofill down a few, we can see we do not get the pretest value minus the pretest mean. We don't get the absolute value of that. And that's because using relative references, the formulas have advanced, the references have advanced. You can see now it's referring to B3 and I4. There's no value in I4. That's an empty cell. Now, of course, one way to fix this problem would be to copy 43 all the way down. But there's a much easier way. We can use what's called an absolute reference. So if I move back up to this cell E2, back into this absolute value of B2 minus I3, I can go into the formula bar up top and move into that I3 reference and press the 
function 4 key, the F4 key. When I do that, and you can see it places the dollar sign before the column, which is column I, and the row, which is row 3. There's now a dollar sign in front of each of those characters. Now I hit enter, and of course we still have the same result for this first entry, but when I autofill down, it now holds this cell reference, the one with the dollar signs in front. It holds the static, so we're getting the correct result. We're always getting the pretest score minus the post-test score. We're getting the absolute value of that difference. Now, I used the function for method. You don't have to do that. You can manually type in a dollar sign before the I and before the three. But really, in this instance, you don't even need to do that. So if I reset this back to being relative, this first formula, so now we have absolute value of B2 minus I3. It's a relative reference. I'll delete these other values. I only need to hold in the row as constant. So as I autofill down or copy and paste down or use the control enter method to copy the values down, I only need the row to stay static. I'm in the same column the whole time. So I don't, I don't need to worry about the column. So I can move into this formula, and instead of using the F4 key, the function 4 key, I can just put a dollar sign in front of the row in the reference I3, so in front of the 3. So this will be dollar sign in front of that 3, enter, and again I'll autofill this down a few cells, and you can see it does come up with the correct result. So why would we want to lock down just the row when we can press the function 4 key, the F4 key, and lock the entire cell down? Uh, that would be faster. It would be faster to use function 4. Well sometimes we want to just lock down the row or the column because of the type of calculations we need to make. So let's use this example with the post-test mean. So I have this pre-test mean of 43 and the post-test mean of 38. So let's say that here in this cell E2 I have the same function B2 minus I3. So the pretest minus the mean. With just the row locked down I can now autofill to the right and the column will advance by one. So I autofill to the right and now I have this value 4, which is 42 minus 38, the absolute value of 42 minus 38. So you notice here that moving from cell E2 to F2, the reference advanced. So it's not I3 anymore. As I move over, it is J3. So it allows this column movement but it doesn't allow the row movement because of that dollar sign. So I can autofill these scores down and I get the correct results here for the absolute value between the post-test and post-test mean. So sometimes we may just want to lock the entire cell reference down because it doesn't matter. We're not going to be autofilling across columns. But other times it's better to use that more precise control and just lock down what we need to be locked down and allow the, the column, in this case, to remain relative. So I mentioned earlier the other methods of advancing the formula across other cells. So I've been using autofill, where you just move to the bottom right and you can drag that formula down or you can drag it to the right. But there are two other methods I'm going to show you. I'm just going to delete these other formulas here. So this first one, of course, is autofill went over that. Another option would be to copy and paste. So control C to copy and then I can fill in all the cells and then hit control V. So I just selected all the cells that I wanted to paste the formula into and then hit control V and of course it's going to retain those properties, those absolute and relative references. They're going to 
move or not move accordingly. The relative references will change, the absolute references will not. Another option would be to use the control enter method. So I'll show you here in cell F2. So I'm going to delete what I have in here now. Now I want to recreate that same calculation. I want to have the absolute value of the post test minus the mean here in cell F2. Except I know that I want this to this calculation to populate all the way down for all 17 records. So I can start by selecting all of the cells that I want the formula to move into. And then just start typing with equal sign. So equal sign and then ABS, absolute value, the post test minus the post test mean. And here I'm just going to lock down the row. So I'm going to go in before the three and put in the dollar sign. And now I can just hit Control Enter. And it has the same effect as if I copy and pasted or autofilled. So we have all the formulas that we want all the way down this column. And they respect the rules set forth by the formula, the relative and absolute references. I hope you found this video on using absolute and relative references in Excel to be helpful. Thanks for watching.